Well, hey guys, if you deal with acne, have you ever had somebody comment on your appearance? It's really frustrating, right? I don't think people realize the emotional toll that having acne can take on somebody, let alone hearing those kinds of comments all the time. In this video, we're gonna talk about the mental health impacts of having acne in adults. It's something we know that affects teenagers, but it also affects many adults, especially adult women. My hope in making this video is that if you're dealing with acne, this will give you a little bit better insight, help you understand that you are not alone. But if you don't have acne, maybe you will think twice before ever commenting on someone's appearance if that is something that you have done you know making these kind of offhand comments like what's going on with your face why does your face look like that why are you breaking out oh you should eat healthier or oh my gosh you should clean up your diet otherwise you wouldn't be breaking out like that these kinds of comments I don't think people realize how they can really impact someone's day to day and ultimately really have a negative impact on their overall emotional health. Before getting into this topic though, I wanna take a moment to thank today's video sponsor, Hero Cosmetics, the maker of the Mighty Patch. I've been talking about this product for a few years now. I love it. What is it? It is a hydrocolloid patch that you can put on a pimple. And the reason I love these so much is that a lot of people struggle with picking their skin and that significantly delays healing of the acne. This forms a nice barrier to your fingers, protecting the pimple. The hydrocolloid material also helps to absorb exudate that comes out of the pimple, facilitating healing and recovery. Now, they've always made these great ones for just isolated pimples. I love them. You can't see them. They're super comfortable. Recently, they came out with a patch for the nose. If you get breakouts on your nose, highly suggest checking this out. They're made out of a really thin, flexible material. It's very comfortable to wear. You can wear it overnight, or honestly, the little round ones, you can pop on a pimple, you can't even see them. You wake up the following morning and peel it away. If you have some inflammatory exudate, you'll be able to see it. For some people, that is a bit gratifying. Hero Cosmetics is available worldwide, and these patches are vegan and cruelty-free, and they're safe in pregnancy. Most people wear them at nighttime, like to bed. You can wear them approximately six to eight hours. But like I said, they're great, especially the these, the original for camouflaging pimples. I think they work better. Personally, in my opinion, they are a better option than putting makeup on over a pimple. Because if you've ever put makeup on over a pimple, whether it be concealer or foundation or whatever, it starts to cake up, flake off, and it can be irritating to the pimple itself, ends up making it look 10 times worse. This nicely camouflages it, blends in with your background skin. You can't notice it at all. It is a great alternative. Um, and with the nose patches, you get 10 patches in this box, and then their Mighty Patch, you get 36 in a box. Hero Cosmetics makes a lot of great products. Y'all know I'm also a huge fan of the Force Shield, their sunscreen. This is a mineral sunscreen, and it has a green tint to it, which helps to minimize the appearance of redness. I reviewed this product for you guys in a video a while ago on sunscreens you need to check out. But right now, Hero Cosmetics is offering a great deal for you guys. If you click the link in my description box and use my code, you can get 15% off site-wide plus free shipping on orders over $35. So definitely check it out. And if you haven't checked out the sunscreen, throw that in your car and give it a try because it is a good one. The global disease burden of acne is pretty significant. I don't think most people realize that, but there are a lot of people walking around with acne, either on their face or their back, their chest, their body, somewhere else. It is a very prevalent because not only does it impact teenagers and, and tweens, but also many, many adults struggle with acne, especially adult women. Acne is not just a disease of oiliness, but it's also governed by hormones. And as we get into our adult years, there can be a lot of hormonal changes going along that influence our acne. For adults who deal with acne, it is very annoying because you thought this was something you were gonna get over as a young adult and you would be done with it and now you're still dealing with it. Acne can be physically painful and it can go on to scar. These outcomes have a significant impact on an individual individual's quality of life. Having acne is associated with an increased risk of a variety of mental health issues, depression, anxiety, social isolation. Many of the qualitative studies that we have to date 
do focus on the health, mental health impacts of acne on teenagers. For example, we know that teenagers with acne are more likely to struggle with depression, anxiety, social isolation. Acne can actually lead to strains in relationships both within the home and outside of the home. More recent studies actually examine the qualitative impacts of having acne on adults and their quality of life and the lived experiences of adults with acne mirrors that of teenagers with acne and that it too really can have a tremendous negative impact on quality of life and emotional well-being. Many women with adult acne express a lot of concern around their appearance. One thing you may be surprised to hear is that adult women with acne report that it has a profound impact in disrupting their professional relationships. They say things like, having acne, a lot of people don't take me as seriously. Having acne, some people think that I am not as capable. And having acne makes me appear younger and less qualified. I thought that was a really interesting finding from this study to really capture how a skin disease can have such an impact on your interpersonal relationships, including professionally. I mean, you think going into a professional setting that you're solely being judged on your ability to perform. But in reality, we all know that appearance-based metrics, subconsciously, they do play a role. And that is unfortunate. Hopefully this video makes you more aware of any potential subconscious bias you may have towards people with a skin condition like acne. Women with acne report feeling very anxious and socially isolating. What they say about how they socially isolate is really noteworthy. Many women report that having acne prevents me from doing what I love. This may be due to just the appearance of acne, but remember acne is also physically uncomfortable. So if you have acne on your back, for example, your body, you may be more uncomfortable doing things that have a lot of friction, like running, things like that can be more uncomfortable. Some people may be less inclined to wear a certain dress because they have acne on their chest and back. They may turn down their friend's offer to have them as their bridesmaid because they don't want to wear a dress that's going to reveal their body acne. Some women may also shy away from romantic relationships due to feeling self-conscious about their acne. And you may say, what's the big deal? It's just a little bit of acne. But if you have acne, you know firsthand that people feel the need to constantly comment on your appearance, whether it be your acne or really anything else. It's just like something that many people cannot resist the urge to do is to just constantly be commenting on random things about your appearance. Whether it be a full-blown skin disease that you have no control over and they're gonna interject their opinion on what you should be doing, what skincare products you should be using, what supplements you should be doing, you know, seed oils is the latest thing. They'll be commenting about your diet, trying to give you advice, telling you to go keto, telling you to do this, telling you to do that, giving you all of these anecdotes and it's very, tone deaf because acne is largely governed by things like our hormones and genetics. And sure, lifestyle factors definitely help out the acne in the long run, but to just be getting these opinions constantly from the armchair experts out there, the keyboard warriors, it definitely starts to feed into your emotional well-being. It really starts to make people second guess themselves second guess their ability to do things. It makes people second guess their self-worth and whether or not they can have a relationship. They start delaying things, thinking once my acne is clear, once my acne is gone, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. I know a lot of people go their whole lifetime really struggling with being overweight and putting off a lot of their living, a lot of their lives to once I fit in that dress, once I can, you know, wear the, those jeans or whatever, then I'm gonna do this, then I'm gonna do that. And they go long stretches not living their lives to the full, fullest. And those folks do get a lot of unsolicited opinions further driving that narrative in their minds. The same holds true for people who deal with skin conditions, especially acne. It's, the you know, it's one of the most common skin conditions, but other things as well. You know, people who have psoriasis, 
Um, they really do deal with a lot of negative commentary from the randos out there. And people who deal with vitiligo, um, a lot of people are gonna comment on that. If you have eczema, people are gonna comment on it. And I think people need to learn to self-police their comments on someone's appearance. It's not helpful. Here's what else women reported. Having acne prevents me from leaving my house. And a lot of this is centered around, I don't wanna go anywhere or do anything without makeup on. And the makeup required to cover acne can be pretty involved. Concealer, etc. It is something that for people who look to camouflage their acne, it takes a lot of effort and no one has all that time. <laughs> and so a lot of women are saying that they don't do certain things because they don't want to have to be bothered with the whole makeup routine in order to go out. They're too, th th having acne is holding them back from going out and living their lives because they will not go out with a bare face. Some women even report that having acne prevents them from getting the mail because uh, they don't want to put makeup on to go out and check the mail. Working in the home, for example, uh, you know, caregivers in the home don't want to go out and risk being seen by the neighbors without makeup on. For women who are dealing with acne like this, and I say women because this is what the study was based on, women with adult acne, and adult acne is much more common in women than in men. Women who are dealing with this level of emotional distress from having acne, and remember acne can go on to scar too. Um, women dealing with this, they actually end up setting the bar really, really high for treatment expectations. Like they wanna be 100% clear because in their mind, there is no acceptable amount of acne and because it's all going to get negative feedback from society. It's all gonna get commentary. 90% clear and that 10% is still gonna get comments. It's still gonna get on, you know, people are still gonna make rude comments. People are still gonna talk about it. And so it ends up making women set unreasonable expectations for the clearance of their acne and the pace of that clearance. And I think as a result, it makes people very, very vulnerable to a lot of you know, gimmicky marketing, falling for fad diets and juice cleanses and things like that. Zealots on the internet touting all sorts of unfounded claims that if you just follow this diet or do that, this or that, you will clear your acne. So I do think that this emotional piece of acne makes women a lot more vulnerable to, to a lot of misleading claims. Other women say that they would just like to have their acne reduced to at least a manageable number of blemishes, like something that is more easy to spot, conceal, or whatever. And then other women tie it into the relationship piece. Clearance to a point where it will no longer impact my professional relationship. That is really eye-opening. I have heard this from women before, but to have it in a study where women are coming forward and saying the same thing over and over again, that it impacts their profession, their career. Career progress should be guided by your abilities, not your appearance. But in reality, appearance does play a subconscious role. So again, if you are someone out there who doesn't have acne or anything going on in your skin, don't go commenting on people's acne. Be aware of subconscious bias that you may judge somebody who has acne as being less capable or less qualified, lazy, not, not exhibiting enough self-care, poor hygiene. These are all subconscious biases that a lot of people have towards people with acne, especially adults with acne. All right, women with acne more likely to have depression, anxiety, social isolation. So take all of that and layer on it the insane frustration that comes with trying to find a dermatologist who will actually listen to you. This is one of the number one complaints that people have when it comes to seeking out acne treatment, that they've tried to go to the dermatologist and the dermatologist breezes in and breezes out and all they're left with is yet another prescription for an antibiotic. And the antibiotics work maybe a little bit for them and then it just comes right back. It's this vicious cycle and they feel overwhelmingly like they are not being heard. And they're frustrated with the amount of time it takes to actually find a dermatologist that will listen to them. This is a problem in uh, 
the way medicine is executed these days, where we have a very uh, corporatized infrastructure where dermatologists are required to see so many patients in such a short amount of time. And therefore, it is very important for dermatologists to listen to their patients um, and listen to what the patient has gone through and what the patient is hoping to achieve and really listen. I mean, that is the key to good medicine is listening. It causes so much disruption that patients are like, I don't want anything to do with this. And they turn to the internet where there are a million zealots on there, a million gurus ready and waiting to sell you a juice cleanse. For people with deeper skin tones, people of color, their acne heals with discoloration that can take many, many months to resolve. It's called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. And many times that is a big concern for people of color, understandably. Sometimes they're less concerned with the actual bumps themselves and they are obviously more interested in not having the acne heal with a dark mark that's gonna last a long time. The patients of color verbalize that not only are they equally frustrated by how complicated it is and difficult it is to find a dermatologist who actually listen to them but then the piece of their hyperpigmentation is often not part of the treatment discussion and I think just a few extra minutes to take the time to explain to patients that the acne treatments whether it be azelaic acid topical retinoid, sunscreen, that these treatments not only are gonna help with clearing up the bumps, they're important to continue to use because they will not only prevent more bumps from occurring, but they will prevent the hyperpigmentation and they will help clear up the hyperpigmentation. And the patient may not even be that worried about the actual acne bumps, it's more, the background changes that occur from having acne, the hyperpigmentation or the scarring. And let's add another layer of distress onto the package. And that is, at least here in the States, getting your insurance to cover these medications. Like there's a new topical medication for acne called Winlevy. I've talked about it in a few videos here and there. It's actually very expensive and very difficult to get insurance to cover it, unfortunately. Um, and this is a case with with a lot of acne treatments, um, they can be very expensive and insurance will not cover it because insurance companies, they view this as a cosmetic issue, but clearly it's not. It's making a, a huge impact on people's mental health um, and it puts people at great risk for depression and a variety of other emotional, psychological, psychiatric illnesses. Anyways, you guys, I hope this video was helpful. Don't forget to check out Hero Cosmetics. Save 15% off site-wide, uh, plus free shipping on orders over $35 when you use my link in the description box and my code. On the end slate, I'm gonna put my video on internet myths about acne, so check that one out. But if you like this, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.